so we've got our servo. We know what it's doing, how it works. And so now we're going to wire it up to our board. This circuit is really simple. All I'm going to do, I'm not going to have any user input or anything like that. Uh, although I will show you where an example for like controlling it with a potentiometer or sensor is. Um, but this example just moves the servo back and forth, nothing else. So I've got uh, power and ground on my board. And then I've got power and ground going into the servo, paying attention to the, the fact that I've got the right wires going to the right thing. And then I've got my, uh, this pin right here, pin two, right? This pin is connected to the data inline. And so this is the pin that's gonna speak to the servo motor. Now, uh, I mentioned that we don't have to write our own code for this. It's actually taken care of for us, lovely. So the way that we can find this out uh, is there's a library for it, just like there's a video library in P5.js or a sound library. I guess there's not a video library in P5.js. There's definitely a sound library, though. Uh, and so, um, you know, this is, uh, th it's the same idea, right? Some people wrote some code that abstracts and simplifies the use of servo motors. Uh, so if you go under f your file menu, and you go, oh, sorry, not in QuickTime, but in Arduino. If you go under File and you go to uh, Examples, you'll see that there's these built-in examples up in top. And then these things down here that say Examples for any board. And these tend to be, uh, these are all actually things that rely on libraries. And they're built-in libraries uh, that extend the capacity of your microcontroller. Uh, not all of these are applicable to every microcontroller. Um, you know, the ones that would be most useful for you would be like the liquid crystal if you had a display that you wanted to add to your board, uh, SD if you had an SD card reader, the servo that we'll take a look at, stepper if you had stepper motors, uh, TFT if you had a little LCD screen. Um, but we're going to stick with servo. And there are many more boards, there are many more libraries that you can add stuff to. I'm going to show you uh, in the next video how you can do that and something that you can use, you know, with the board that you already have and no other equipment. But in any case, the servo library is included. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on servo and then we're going to go over to this example called sweep. Uh, and for me, it opened on the wrong screen. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so here... Uh, inside of this example, what it does is it, it just moves the servo from uh, 0 degrees to one, 180 degrees and back again, and just does it back and forth forever. So the way that this library works, and this is something that you need to do for every library that you're going to use, you need to include it at the top of your program. So you would say uh, include servo.h, and every library is going to have a different include, you can kind of, uh, you can shorthand it and find it up here by saying include library. These are the libraries that I have installed on this user. My, uh, my main account has m more libraries than I care to think about, so this is a little bit easier for you all to see. Um, so you can see right here, servo, and if you click on it, it just, it sticks this up at the top of your program, right? It's already included in this example, so you don't need to do that, but for other libraries that you may wind up using. That's how you can go about doing it. So the first thing that this library does is it, you, it's got a, an object. And just like we talked about objects and classes in P5.js, they exist here too. Don't freak out. You don't have to write your own. Um, it's already taken care of for you, right? So here we say uh, servo is an instance of the servo, is the servo class, and then my servo is the object, right? So whenever we refer to my servo in the sketch, we're referring to this particular servo that we want to control. Uh, there's a variable here for the position. So position is zero, zero degrees. Uh, and then in the setup, what we do is we say uh, my servo dot attach. And we attach this to the pin that we want, that we're going to be communicating on. So for us, this is digital pin two. So I'm going to change this to pin two and uh, that's it inside of the setup and in the loop here all we're doing is we're writing out a value a value that's going to be somewhere between 0 and 180 
because those correspond to degrees, and that's how we that's how we can identify what where the servo is positioned. And we just say, and so there's these two uh, for loops, right? One of them goes from zero and counts up to 180. And in steps of one degree, we say my servo dot right, and then the angle that we want it to move to, and then we need to give it uh, a little bit of a pause, right? And the reason that we're doing this is because there's twofold. One is the way that the servo works, it receives a, a series of pulses inside of a specified time frame. And if you make it too short, it won't be able to, it'll not understand what you're sending it. But also, uh, because this is like a physical thing, it needs time to move somewhere, right? It's not instantaneous. So we're going to give it 15 milliseconds to move one degree, plenty of time. And then we'll just, you know, do this 180 times. And then once we reach the end, we will run this other way. And for it'll go back and forth forever and ever. Uh, so I've got this, um, uh, this, this, this little uh, doohickey on here so you can visualize it. But you could use anything that you wanted to. You could use, um, you know, there, these other things come inside of your pack, but you could tape an arrow to this and then use it as an indicator. You could, uh, you know, um, uh, use it to move a little flag if you're feeling patriotic. I don't know. Um, anything that you like, right? So I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to uh, upload it. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure that I, there we go. So uh, <clears throat> we'll give it a second. Now this is actually, um, this is not, I'm not, I haven't programmed this yet. So what you're seeing here is actually uh, some junk signals being sent to the, <laughs> to the uh, servo. Uh, so it's done. And now I can see that this light is pulsing. So I know it's ready to start again. So I'm going to press reset. And what's going to happen is this is going to quickly move to the zero position and then it's going to start rotating back and forth. So now we can see it's moving and it's just rotating back and forth, right? Uh, so this is using the servo library. The other example inside of here is called uh, knob and that uses a potentiometer to determine the position of this. But you could type anything inside of here and it will hold that as long as until you update it again. So if I were to say, um, you know, uh, my servo dot right uh, 90, if I wanted to figure out where the center position of this was, then I said delay uh, 10,000, right? So we'll hang out here for 10 seconds. You'll see that it just, you know, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It's, uh, it, it's static. These are really good for... Um, you know, I see people like make puppets with these things, animatronics, uh, all sorts of crazy stuff, dioramas. Uh, so here, we'll run this again. It's going to go to uh, 180, and then uh, it'll go to zero. It'll go to 180, back to zero, and then it's going to pop to 90 degrees and then wait for 10 seconds. or it should. Come on, you can do this. There we go. I think that my cables are loose. So this is the one downside to um, using cables like this. It's probably better to tape these and keep them secure so that way you don't get like uh, stray voltage or anything like that. I'm going to try real quickly unplugging this, making sure that all the connections are solid. Plug it back in. There we go. So that's 90 degrees. Uh, this is not centered, obviously. I just kind of popped it on there. But 10 seconds later, this will go to zero degrees and back again, right? One thing to be aware of, if you start to put a lot of, uh, if you've got a lot of um, weight on here, it's going to uh, pull more current. Um, so you just want to be careful of that. 
and by, by a lot of weight, I mean like, you know, if you put like five pounds on here, right? Uh, so, you know, pieces of paper, uh, other little things that you might move around, those should be okay. Uh, 